I have a granddaughter that's been doing gymnastics ever since she's a little girl in elementary school. And one thing I've noticed in attending some of her meets is that they always have a lot of padding around the equipment. The girls always land on something padding. Depending on the event, they might have more or less padding, but the padding's there to minimize impact on their bodies because more cushion means less impact, right? Welcome to Aegis Runner, I'm Ralph. So conventional wisdom tells us that more padding often will minimize impact on our bodies. That's why you'll see you know, padding on various uh, things for safety, for children and adults as well. So it stands to reason then that getting a running shoe with more cushion ought to eliminate injury and impact on our bodies, right? So as what often happens when you're researching things on the internet, you always find something that maybe takes you off on a tangent and you can go a lick at it and investigate it and learn something new. What happened to me recently when I was researching something but came across an article about a 2015 study at Harvard Medical Center, uh, running center that they have there, where they looked at the difference between highly cushioned shoes and standard shoes. Now they define highly cushioned not by stack height or heel thickness, but by the volume. They said the highly cushioned shoes had two and a half times more volume of material than the standard shoe. How that translates into stack height or thickness I don't know, they didn't, didn't really discuss that in the article. But when they did this study, they looked at a group of runners, they found that the forces on the body, the forces in the leg, were higher with their uh, highly cushioned shoes. In fact, not only is the force higher, the velocity of the impact was higher, meaning that when you're running, you know, when you're, before your foot strikes the ground, the force on your leg is zero, and then you strike the ground, the force increases. The rate at which it increases to its peak is higher and higher in highly cushioned shoes. So that study says that highly cushioned shoes will result in higher impact forces on your body. So one of the researchers theorized when you're wearing highly cushioned shoes, and it kind of lulls us into thinking we can just slap our feet on the ground, and that's why they get those higher impact forces. I don't know. So let's fast forward a few years to Oregon State University, where they actually decided to study cushion shoes, maximum cushion shoes versus standard shoes. Now here they told us what shoe they were wearing. And in this study, they used Hoka Bondies, which has about a 42 millimeter stack height in the heel. They compared to that to New Balance 880s, which was much less, I think it was around 34. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, so the New Balance were about 34. So 34 versus 42. Now I think 34 is a decently cushioned shoe. I have several Sockneys that are under 30, like 28 and 27. So 34 is a decent cushion, but to look at one even more than that at 42. Now in this day, they looked at 15 women who averaged at least 10 miles a week. They typically looked at runners who were heel strikers. Again, they brought them in a laboratory, instrumented them up, and measured the forces on their body. And they kind of found the same thing. They found that the impact forces were higher in the Hoka Bondies with a higher stack height compared to the uh, New Balance 880s. They also find, again, this velocity of impact, the rate at which the forces increase, was also higher. Now, now one of the theories they had, well, these these women, these people are not used to wearing maximalist shoes, not used to wearing all this stack height, and therefore that probably impacted their gait because they didn't wear those shoes until the test. So they had no experience in running them. So fast forward another year to 2019, the same researchers did another test. Now here they brought in about 25 runners, various ages, I think from 18 to 45. Again, these people are average 10 to 15 miles a week, tend to be more heel strikers. And again, they use the same two types of shoes, brought them into the treadmill and measured these forces and, and all the, the uh, uh, mechanics related to that. Then they said, go home for six weeks, wear those Hoka Bondies, wear those high heel, uh, high heel stack shoes. So after six weeks, they brought them back in. By this time, they were acclimated to wearing the shoes and made their measurements. And what did they found? You probably know where I'm going with this. They found no change in their gait, no change in their running form. And again, they still found that these higher cushion shoes had more impact forces and rate of impact than the standard uh, heel stack shoes in the uh, New Balance 880s. So these small studies do suggest that we could have greater impact forces on our leg when we have higher cushion shoes. However, there's also some data to suggest that these higher cushion shoes can help with our feet. If you suffer from plantar fasciitis or strikes fractures, a higher cushion shoe is helpful for that. Uh, in fact, one of the causes of plantar fasciitis I learned about when I had it is standing or walking on hard surfaces. So the more cushion can help with an issue like plantar fasciitis. But we do have to recognize that that higher cushioning increasing the impacts on our leg can impact knee issues. So if you suffer from knee issues, a higher cushion shoe might be not helpful.
So where does this leave us? So I, I think there's a couple of conclusions here I think we can make. Before I get into that, though, I want to draw your attention to a video I made several weeks ago about pronation shoes. You know, typically shoes may be classified by motion control, stability, or neutral, really to help with overpronation or supination. And the conclusion of that video and the research I had is that maybe they really don't help that. It's just what's more important is not the supination or the pronation control, uh, but the comfort level of the shoe. So now we've got other data that suggest that maybe cushion may impact forces on our legs and may impact where the injuries are. So again, we have to remember these are small studies. One, you know, one was 15 people, one was 25 people. And certainly you don't want to draw a conclusion uh, that may apply to you because we're millions of runners. You're just one runner uh, that may have different set of mechanics in your leg, different set of body physique, that maybe certain shoes work better for you. And I think that's the conclusion here. You need to be aware of that the higher the cushion, maybe the higher the impact forces on your leg and the lower the cushion maybe it may be worse for your feet i think at the end of the day you want a shoe that you feel comfortable in and when you run in you, you it works well for you and i think that's the key message here just be aware of these things but don't don't rule out high cushion shoes don't rule out low cushion shoes try different amounts of cushion try different pronation support try different stack height See what works best for you when you find something, stick with it. Just kind of be aware of some of these relationships and use them to maybe guide some of your selection and trying different shoes, but stick with what works with, with you. Hey, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, scroll down a little bit, hit that like icon. And if you're new here, I really, really appreciate you being here. I'd love to have you stick around and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. So thanks again for watching and happy running. Hey, hey.